Almost everyone here is familiar with vitamin E. Many of you are probably taking it as a supplement, either in a multivitamin or as a standalone vitamin E product. But, did you realize that there are two major vitamin E families, and they are distinct from each other? What's even more concerning is that the most commonly used vitamin E form, alpha-tocopherol, doesn't provide long-term health benefits. In fact, it can raise the risk of cancer and heart disease. Vitamin E isn't just one thing, it's a family of eight compounds, alpha-beta-gamma-delta-tocopherols, and alpha-beta-gamma-delta-tocotrienols. All of these belong to the lipid-soluble category. Here's where it can get confusing, alpha-tocopherol is often used interchangeably with vitamin E, which can cause ambiguity. Because tocopherols have been known for a century now. However, relatively recently, within the last 20 years or so, scientists uncovered the new form of vitamin E, the tocotrienols. They found that tocotrienols are completely different form of vitamin E, and they have distinct properties compared to tocopherols. The molecular structure of tocotrienols sets them apart, they have shorter tails and heads and don't anchor deeply into cell membranes. These differences allow tocotrienols to easily enter cells. What's even more exciting is that tocotrienols have significantly more potent health benefits and don't come with the long-term risks associated with tocopherols. Tocopherols is the more common form found in most supplements today. Tocotrienols, which are part of the vitamin E family, can be found naturally in various food sources. These sources include vegetable oils, wheat germ, barley, certain nuts, and grains. When it comes to vegetable oils, palm oil and rice bran oil are especially rich in tocotrienols. You can also find tocotrienols in other oils like grapefruit seed oil, oats, hazelnuts, maize, olive oil, buckthorn berry, rye, flaxseed oil, poppy seed oil, and sunflower oil. These foods are where you can get your dose of tocotrienols. Here, I'm going to show you two examples of vitamin E supplements. One is from Life Extension, which contains a mixture of both tocopherols and tocotrienols. The other is from Swanson, and it contains only tocotrienols. Please note that these are just examples, and I'm not endorsing any specific products. I'm providing these as illustrations and guidelines. Vitamin E can indeed increase the risk of death as you heard correctly. But how certain are we about this? Let me present the concrete evidence that high doses of vitamin E can be extremely harmful. Most of the studies we have examined primarily involve tocopherols. In one particular large study, the authors discovered a statistically significant increase in all-cause mortality, 39 additional deaths per 10,000 individuals, when high doses, or more than 400 IU, of vitamin E were taken. It's crucial to emphasize that high-dose vitamin E can do more harm than good. In fact, vitamin E may displace other fat-soluble antioxidants, ultimately leading to increased oxidative damage. This recommendation is firmly rooted in the evidence, which consistently indicates harm rather than benefit. Supplementation with vitamin E at doses exceeding 400 IU per day is associated with a higher risk of death from all causes. Patients who are taking high doses of vitamin E should receive counseling to reduce their intake to less than 200 IU per day. When considering cancer, it's important to note that vitamin E in the form of tocopherols can actually increase the risk of cancer. Let's take a look at the select study as an example. This study involved an extended follow-up of patients and revealed that healthy men with an average risk of prostate cancer who followed contemporary community standards of screening and biopsy and took a common dose and formulation of vitamin E tocopherol at 400 IU daily, had a significantly higher risk of prostate cancer. The study found a notable 17% increase in prostate cancer incidence, highlighting how seemingly harmless yet biologically active substances like vitamins can potentially cause harm. Once again, my recommendation is to avoid pure forms of tocopherol and not to exceed a daily intake of 200 IU. It's evident that 400 IU of tocopherol can lead to an elevated risk of developing cancers.
The message I want to emphasize today is straightforward and actionable. I strongly advise everyone to limit their daily vitamin E intake to 200 IU or less. It's vital to be mindful of the amount of vitamin E you're taking in for your health. Instead of choosing pure tocopherols, which are commonly found in many supplements, I urge you to explore the options of tocotrienol forms or combinations of alpha tocopherols and tocotrienols. These alternative forms not only offer superior health benefits but also provide a safer choice for your well-being. In conclusion, I encourage you to take action by adhering to this recommendation. Keep your vitamin E intake at or below 200 IU per day and consider tocotrienol or mixed forms to support your overall health. Your well-being is in your hands.